get straight into it. Hi guys, Daz back again. I know what seems like a million years that I've not been here. Okay. So I've decided to change things up a bit and look at how people like us with anxiety and depression look at everyday things really in our own, let's be honest, fucking ridiculous way. And so today, I'm delving into the interestingly weird and crazy world of dating. Thank you. So let's do it. Dating, 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 dating. It's a strange, strange subject. It's quite an emotive subject and we've all probably been involved in it at some point or other to varying degrees. Okay. Now, I'm currently single, so I'm technically dating, although not dating, particularly at the moment because of the current situation that we can't talk about. Dating is a weird kind of thing and I think over the years it's changed from traditional dating where you might meet someone in a bar or a club or a friend of a friend and then go out on a date. So where do you live? To now online dating seems to be the thing. All right, that's the way it is. And when you've got anxiety and depression added into that mix, it kind of explodes things up to a ridiculous situation. There's all these different apps, some have got a better reputation, some less so, but the thing is you've got your picture and you've got your profile. Now profile and picture in theory should be fine, but it's really difficult sometimes to put up that picture that's really the best you without that mental, crazy, ridiculous fear of judgment. Isn't it delightful? It's a crazy situation because you want to be honest but you don't want to be honest and it's that balancing act between putting yourself out there but not wanting to put yourself out there. Okay what? If you don't look for someone from an online dating perspective then the option is to not date and then you're alone in your home sad and just really just Hmm. Kind of like the situation now, to be honest. It's a weird, weird thing. And the expectations around this whole thing really are just a minefield for anyone with any sort of anxiety and depression. Nah, I don't really feel like it. Getting over that first stage fear of putting the profile up with a picture, if you can get to that point and you're not anxious enough, there's more to come. Shit on it. Okay, you've got your profile. You've had contact and you've chatted a bit, maybe through messages, and you feel, okay, now's the time to uh, meet up. Hello, young lady. Now, here's the bizarre thing that I don't understand. We go from chat, chat, chat on the internet and messages or the app, bang, straight to meeting up for a drink or dinner or... I know a cracking owl sanctuary. Why isn't that initial meeting a video call? That would make much more sense because then if the person's not quite how you hope they were, you're nice and safe and away and it's nice and easy. Yes sir, I like it. Now obviously the current situation, that is literally the only option we have at the moment, but the whole concept of a video chat doesn't seem to have be there. It's sort of chat 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 on messages and then bang, let's meet up for a drink or coffee or... Monkey tennis? Something, you know, whatever. That is quite a leap. And if you're dealing with any sort of anxiety, bang! Because meeting someone on a date, whilst you sort of know them-ish through chatting to them and you know their maybe their favourite colour and the name of their pet. Barry and Buttons, Cat Stevens, Hilary Fluff and Christopher Columbus. It's literally meeting a real proper human being person. Dumbass. In person for the first time. And that can push your anxiety levels super, super high. What do you do in that situation? Because it's like, shit, are they gonna like me? Are they gonna see me sitting down and leave immediately? This butt's too smooth. And all these kind of internal questions, which are probably normal for everyone in that situation, any sort of anxiety can almost stop you turning up and then making an excuse saying, oh, I had a flat tire or some other bullshit reason. Mmm. It's just too much. It's too much to take. And whilst us, my people, people with anxiety, depression, want to have relationships and want to meet other people and live a normal life, this small little piece is fucking difficult. It really is difficult and just insane. Literally insane. I mean, that's, I guess that's the whole point. The choice of meeting up and where you meet up, again, is another thing. Coffee, drink, fine. Nice and easy fairly relaxed, no set amount of time that you have to be there. Jerome, make it too! But I would say if you've got any sort of anxiety, don't have a first date as a meal because then you've got to sit there with the other person for as long as it takes to eat the meal. Mmm boy, I'm starving. And certainly not something like the theatre or the cinema. That's like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. It's 
more anxious to get up halfway through and leave. Okay, bye. The first date of the cinema is probably the worst date ever. Yes, you know, you're in the dark and you're sitting next to each other. There might be some holding hands, but you're essentially in the dark looking away from each other, concentrating on something else. There's no talking. It might as well not be on a date. Oh, I've wasted my life. Now the, the anxiety's building. We've met someone online. We, we've chatted online and we've decided we're going to meet up in person. We've kind of... We've done the breathing exercises. We've done the meditation. We're there. We're, we're calm. We're good. Good. What to wear? Oh, shit. This is just taking things to the next level because what do you wear? If you go really cool and relaxed and laid back and turn up with some sort of sweatpants and an old dirty t-shirt and some flip-flops, looks like you've made zero effort. Then if you go the other way and dress up and I make a real super effort, is it going to look like I've tried too hard, that I'm desperate and I'm really, really trying hard? That also is not a good look. And this is a nightmare to sort of think about and just process because you want to put on your best appearance. You want to, you know, be attractive to the other person without looking that you've made an effort even but you are making an effort but you want it to be known that you're making an effort but not so much of an effort that you're desperate i mean that sentence doesn't even really make sense one eternity later there's a lot going on and that again that's another thing that can just build up so much to make you message and say look i can't make it i'm ill or the dog needs help with his crossword puddle <laughs> The dog needs help with his crossword puddle. That's probably a good excuse to use. Any kind of bullshit excuse to get out of it because if you've kind of managed to get to the point of arranging the date, it's all gonna happen and then what do you wear? And it's just like fucking difficult to pitch that right so you don't look like you're desperate. As we're moving up the scale of anxiety, appearance, as in weight, build, shaven, not shaven, hair, no hair, etc. All of that stuff. Whew. Okay, we're now looking at, are they going to find me attractive? Or self-image problems. Now, obviously, this potentially moves into a whole different area of, of mental health with regard to body dysmorphia and eating disorders, that sort of thing. And that's not necessarily an area that I've got any knowledge on at all. It's funny because it's true. But it's a valid point in this situation. And, you know, as we kind of move forward on this, the whole concept of, you know, our own image and how we look at ourselves and how we see ourselves is, is vital. And this is, again, where the anxiety just starts to sort of take momentum it's just gathered snowball effect i'm already hearing voices you get to the date we're all good we're happy with everything we've actually managed to get through and just process that anxiety and we're there we're on the date we're, we're what we're all super happy now we've got the whole set of problems on its own shit now what firstly who's gonna pay you can be traditional gent to go okay man pays <laughs> Or you go, okay, let's 50-50. That whole point, I think you should really have the discussion about who, who should pay. Some people think, you know, if you if you are someone on a date, you should pay. There's a tradition list. They think, well, the man should always pay. 50-50, first date, all that. I don't think there's any right answer. But the point is, before that, there's that nerves. There's that, shit, I can afford to pay this much, but I can't afford to pay for them. That kind of thing. And I'm not saying in any way, don't go on a date if you haven't got any money. That's not the case. The fact is that finances can be a big anxiety kind of lead because if you know if you haven't got a ton of money on you or access to it can be quite nerve-wracking so I think being clear as you can up front is the best thing how about I'll give you no money and if you don't like that transaction I'll jab you in the gums with my screwdriver but that anxiety and that nerves straight away is like shit and again that can then ruin the date because you've got this I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay, and all this sort of stuff. No, sir, I don't like it. And so now we come down to this kind of the main guts of the date, and that's really the conversation and what's going on. Shit, what the fuck are we going to talk about during this date? Harris the news! You've got your interests and hobbies and life aspirations and all that kind of groovy stuff, and they've got theirs, and ideally you've kind of got something in common, which is why you decided to sort of come on the date in the first place. How do you feel about 45-year-old virgins who still live with their parents? Once you're in person, the flow of conversation can be, again, another huge thing. Stress, sort of <gasps> anxious, just, oh, what, you know, what are we going to talk about? And then as that goes on, if that starts to go maybe a little bit bad or not going in, in a direction that perhaps you're comfortable in or something like that, then that makes the whole situation really awkward and then, bang, anxiety just punches you. And 
and like you're just trying to deal with this situation you're in this horrible kind of social cell with just the two of you stuck just a mind, 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 and this just builds up too much, and then it's it's hard to then even say anything, and then that just basically fucks up the whole day. Uh... Something which I think is quite controversial is the sort of pre-screening, the whole concept of googling the person or looking them up on Facebook, Instagram, that kind of thing. Oh, hurry up! I'm a busy man. It seems to be that people don't seem to like admitting that they've checked you out, which seems weird, because why wouldn't you? If you're going to meet a stranger, even though it's in a public place, why the fuck would you not look at them on social media or on Google? Because you know they might be an absolute fucking psychopath. Oh, you're my wife now. Then again... Yeah... Fair point. <laughs> if you're quite open on Facebook, Instagram, anything on the internet in general, anyone can find that out. But to some people, that may be a bad thing. Now, I personally know this to be fucking detrimental to me. You disgusting person. Get out of my face. Now, I'm massively open about mental health and my situation and everything like that. And I want to be super open. But I'm very, very very aware that probably more often than not it's super detrimental to me meeting people and that sort of situation just because people see that and they're straight away whoa whoa there Leslie whoa 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 there you know that's not something I want to deal with even though probably more people than you realize do deal with that but just don't say anything Someone being upfront is also a bit odd. Not many people that upfront, unfortunately. Please be more upfront. Because they're like, shit, you know, this person's a little bit uh, unhinged. Do I really want to meet them? Oh, God, no. And obviously, people with anxiety, we tend to overthink absolutely everything to the millionth degree. And so we're kind of like, no, God, no, they think that about me. And, and then that may push you to kind of not be as honest. But then why would you not be honest? Who are you, people? That whole Googling, looking up on social media, pre-screening kind of thing. It makes all the sense in the world to do that. But as I said, it's a double-edged sword. Now, comment below your experiences with dating. And if you did like this video, make sure you just tickle that like button. Don't smash it. Give it a little tickle. And if you haven't done already, make sure you subscribe here and check out my other video up here. And remember, don't take life so seriously because you're always just one laugh away. See you later. Bye.